Hello, I'm Pastor Brian. I want to thank you so much for joining me as we look into God's Word to see His timeless truth. Have you ever received a gift that was for you, but essentially it was for other people? In fact, um, the camera that I'm using right now, it every time I go to maybe look at asking for another camera and being it to be a gift for me that my wife agrees to, I go through that dynamic of saying, yes, I want this camera. Can I get this camera? But essentially, this camera can be used to take pictures of our family. And in that, it's being used for other people. And I can use it for our family. I can use it for ministry. I can use it for all these different things for the benefit of other people. Maybe you're the same way. Maybe there's things that you say, all right, this is something that I've gotten, but essentially it is for the purpose of the benefit of using it for other people. That's what we're going to be looking at in Ephesians today. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer, just asking him to guide us and direct us as we look into his word. Dear Lord, we thank you that as we come before you, that we can honor you with all all that we have been given, Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes to really see how we can live out the Christian life, that we could grow in maturity. Give me the words to say, give those that are listening ears to hear, that we may know you better. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. So, we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 7. And as we go through it, it is building upon what Paul is already talking about. Remember last week, he talked, or he talked about how in the church we are united. There is a, a oneness, that there is a unity that we need to have within the church. And this is a great pitch or great emphasis that he has after he talks about all that we've been given in Christ and all the riches that we have and that at the center of it is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And so because of all of this that Christ has done, he first goes into the topic of unity. And as he has gone into top, the topic of unity, we're, uh, like I said, we, we are united together because of what Christ has done. And this is big thinking about back then with uh, Jews and Gentiles being united into one person and, and that and that essentially that it is because of the work of Christ. Now, with the work of Christ, after he's been talking about this unity, this oneness, and we've kind of been looking at that, now he transitions and says, with this you, unity, you, each and every one of us, has been given a gift for the benefit of others. Because what Paul is working towards is that we grow in maturity, that we really see that we have, like Paul, a prisoner of Christ for the purpose of building up one another for the proclamation of the gospel that he may be known, that he may be glorified. And so that's exactly what we're looking at today. It starts off here. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, uh, but grace was given. And this, but grace was given. He is going back to this idea of grace, that which we have received, that we have not earned, and that it is a gift of God. But grace has been given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So it's Christ who has given the gift, and he has decided essentially what gift and and of how much and and a lot of times when you go into a church or you or, or you're in a church group there's a lot of question about what is my spiritual gifting and there's all sorts of spiritual tests and all of those things in fact a lot of people have asked me about that what about doing these spiritual tests and there could be some benefit to them but I think the gifting that God has given us is unique to us and to the manner and way he has given it to us. But, but we need to go ahead 
and be using that to benefit others. And he's going to go ahead and we're going to look at how he goes back into the Old Testament. He'll go back into Psalm chapter uh, 64, verse 18, and he takes this passage. Now, he does quote it exactly, but he takes a picture where, uh, with David, where they have successfully been used by God as God has provided victory for them and that they have received the spoils from that. And so he's, what Paul's going to do is essentially he's going to say, that was written for this right here to be written to show about how God has given each and every person within the church how we are being built upon one another, which the, the cornerstone is Christ, and, and, and the Holy Spirit resides within us within a special way, and, and this is for the purpose of really the body of believers, so that each and every one of us is so important to the church. You can look at the church today, and I oftentimes scratch my head and go, is this exactly how Christ has wanted the church? And, and, and the, the point that I'm getting at is, or especially the aspect of the church that I'm looking at, a lot of times it is seen as the church hires a pastor and the pastor does all the work. That's not how he has designed the church. He has designed the church not as a spectator event, but as a bot, people coming together, a body of believers coming together, being united in Christ, encouraging one another, living life with one another. And so it's not that you just hear it and it's just in, 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 but it is how can I use what God has been, God has given me? Because each one of us, if you're a believer in Christ, he has given you a gift. And how can that be utilized to build up the body, to bring it to maturity, to uh, be a benefit for those that are around? And, and so this is what he says, uh, verse 8. Therefore it says, so he's going to be quoting, like I talked about, Psalm 68, verse 18. When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. So, essentially, the next part of it is going to be him explaining what he's uh, just quoted from Psalm 68. And that's what I, kind of what I've been talking about, is he's taking this passage and where it talks about gifts being given by God in the sense of spoils within Psalm, but that he has been given or has given gifts to believers, and this is where that gift has come from, and, and what a great gift it is, and he's going to give the purpose of it later on, but he's explaining this gift that has been given to you and to me as believers for a particular purpose. And so let's see exactly where this is rooted. And as it, actually we see it uh, as far as here, where it, it talks about how, as and, there, and there's lots of speculation about what this uh, means, but that essentially as they were victorious, as they were um, victorious from their battle, and maybe they were going up to Jerusalem, that they they were given these things, these gifts. And essentially it was given to them uh, because they, uh, of God's grace and he has provided victory. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But he had also descended to the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fulfill all things. So, complicated, and there's been lots of written about this, lots of ideas. And, and I'll kind of give indication of the different ideas that are out there, but I'll, but I'll kind of show you kind of where I'm, I think it's going. And, and, and don't forget, this part of it, ultimately is leading to the purpose of gifts given to the body of believers that 
that the body, the church, the body of believers would be grown up and would have unity and maturity. And so, so he ascended. Uh, but what does that mean? He had also descended to the lower uh, regions. Some people will say that he, after he was crucified, he went and he, he proclaimed uh, the good news to those that um, were in, in captive being held. Um, and, and, and that, some people say, it was that he went into, the, into Hades and he proclaimed the gospel to those who had trusted in him. And, and I don't think it's necessarily that because he, when it talks about uh, the lower regions of the earth, he could have used the word Hades or something like that. And it, it, people say that, well, it could have meant that he just came to earth. And, but why did he say lower regions of the earth? And so what I think it's referring to, especially because we of chapters 1 through 3, is the work that he did on the cross. That he suffered and died on the cross. He was put in the grave. He conquered sin and death. So victorious. So he, in that act... He then ascended. He he proved that he was over all, and that's what that he is victorious. That he is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and that's what it talks about. He ascended far above all the the heavens, meaning that he is over all. He is in control of all. He is victorious that he might fulfill all things. So that which was looked at in the Old Testament, looking for a Messiah, the Messiah had come and he, had, uh, he had, has victory because of what happened on the cross and that he conquered sin and death and rose on the third day, that all that had been prophesied was fulfilled. And with that act of the cross and him dying and rising again, that we have victory in Christ, that we have been given a gift, not for our own purposes, but for the purpose of building up the body of believers. And that's what he's talking about right here. And so he's going to go ahead and explain this. Now, there are parts in 1 Corinthians and in, in Romans where he talks about other gifts. See, these gifts that are listed here are not necessarily uh, exhaustive. In fact, he only lists four, and we'll get into that a little bit. But it's, it, as you look at it, they're more. think of them as more categories, and there are more than are listed here. And I think he's referring to all the gifts that are given by God. Now, there are natural giftings and abilities that we have. And God has given us those abilities. But there are gifts that are clearly given by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of building up the church. And each of us have these. And, and, and these are the ones that he gives. And he, has, and he has given the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. So what we have is that he gives, and it's kind of in two different groupings, he has given uh, some to be apostles and prophets. Now, if we think about apostles, in the more stricter sense, the apostles were those in Jesus' day who saw, who witnessed Jesus, that followed his teachings. And so, um, as we see, the apostles essentially meant uh, sent ones. I, I think as he groups it here and talking about apostles and prophets, those were particular for those time right then and there. So, in a specific sense, yes, for those uh, that was initially forming the, the beginnings of the church, uh, but I also think, and that's kind of where I lean, but there's also a sense of being a sent one, going out, being a, a, a missionary, which, which we're called to. Again, there are many different gifts listed in Scripture, and I think they're more overall general instead of not always specific ones but he does give specific ones and in that they are meant for building up 
other believers. We're called to live uh, being sent out, going forth and telling others. So in that sense, yes, we're called to, but somebody who exhibits that in a special way, you say, wow, they are gifted by God for that. That, that is something that God has enabled it. Uh, the prophets. So uh, prophets, again, as you look in scripture, it's kind of foretelling what will happen. And we have scripture. Uh, the scripture in and of itself is complete, is sufficient. Uh, we don't need any more special revelation. But what we have is that some would say uh, that uh, prophets could also be those that are expounding the word of God. And, and that's how some people take it. I, I tend to more go towards the concept of a prophet as, as foretelling what will uh, happen, but others have explained it as explaining the word of God. The evangelist and so the evangelist, the, the one who is telling of the good news. Now, you might have the, the spiritual gift of evangelism. And as you proclaim and, and tell people about Jesus, it's just natural. People hear, people come to know the Lord. And, and there's just that sense of God's presence being really in that area of your life in that way, in that format. But that doesn't mean, oh, I don't have the gift of evangelism. I don't need to tell anybody about Jesus. That's not true. All of us are to proclaim the gospel. But when you come across somebody that has that spiritual gifting, you go, wow, there is something. It seems like they talk and people come to know the Lord. So there's that special spiritual gift of that. And... Uh, I would say, shepherd and teachers. Now, I, I think they're kind of combined. I think uh, as we look at shepherds, teachers, or pastors and teachers, the ones that are to pastor the flock uh, are, 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 are kind of that distinct role for males, as we see as far as the uh, qualifications for elders. But, um, and, and all elders are teachers, but... Not all teachers are elders in and, and, and that sense. And so you see that some are given that special role where they are called to teach and, and shepherd the flock of believers. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. And I kind of would break these down as the first two specifically for that time. But yet I can see where others would say, no, the, those are still things that are going on. And, and then this whole idea of evangelism, yes, all of us are called um, to tell other people about Christ, but so don't, you're not excused from it, but there are special individuals where this special gifting is, and then the shepherds and teachers, and, and see that these gifts are given, they can't boast. And, and isn't that great? You can't say, I'm better than that person because this gift that you have been given is by God, not by your work. And so you see that as different people that are believers have different giftings, that you can't boast about that or look, say, oh, no, I don't have that. I'm not as good as the other person. That's not it at all. Because by God's grace, he's been giving it to his, the measure that Christ has given it to us. So we can't boast. So even in that, it allows there to be a sense of unity, knowing that I have a responsibility to exercise that which has been given to me by God for the building up of others. And that's each and every one of us. And as you see, it's, uh, the purpose is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and, and for the building up of the body of Christ. Each and every one of us are called to be a part of the church, to build up one another, to be used by God for building up the church so that it flourishes, so that there is unity, so that we work together to reach the lost world. 
with the gospel and, and that we're no longer immature, but that we become mature. And I think that's where we really need to focus on. In the midst of being united as one in Christ, each of us have a unique role and we are to use the role in which God has given us to build up the body of Christ. Now, again, I said this is not an exhaustive list, but ask yourself, where, what does God have me or what does God want me to do with the giftings and the abilities that he has given me to benefit the body of Christ? That, that's a real question that we need to ask. And so this can't, ha- this can't happen if we're not a part of the body of believers, if we're not engaging one another, if we're, if we're not walking with the Lord, if, if we become selfish and, and, and focus internally, this can't happen. The, these gifts have been given to us that we reach out and to others, to the body, and for the building up, for uh, encouraging one another. So let's go ahead and go before the Lord. And I want you to ask God, if you're a believer, you know, just ask him, you know, Lord, with, with what you've given me, what do you want me to do to encourage, to build up the body of Christ? How do you want me to serve in hospitality? How do you want me to serve in teaching? How do you want me to serve in, in, in so many ways, uh, showing uh, love and grace and all those things to people in the church? How, how does God, how has God uniquely gifted you as a child of God to build up the body of Christ. And that's what each and every one of us needs to be doing, is being utilized by God. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have so graciously done the work and given us this gift to be used by by you for the building up of the church. Lord, help us knowing that we have been saved and we have been redeemed by you to serve one another, Lord, Lord, just help us to live this out in a real way. Lord, it's in your name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, reach out to me and be blessed.